Good evening from Ashdod. We just had a few minutes ago our second barrage of the day missiles from Hamas in Gaza. And uh, right today the health department said that in the south of Israel the use of tranquilizers are up 90% since the beginning of the war. Well, our tranquilizer is to come out and breathe fresh air and to talk to Hashem. Come out and talk to Hashem, and Hashem gives us clarity of thought. We stop thinking, what's, what's the lesson of this war? The lesson of this war is where we think that we as the Jewish people have any friends in the world we're wrong because the Torah says, in am levadad yishkon, and we live alone as a nation. And if we think we have any friends, they all come and disappoint us. As you all throughout history, there's always a time where Jews had a golden period in diaspora. There's a golden period in Spain and a golden period in Germany. There's even a golden period in Poland. But these golden periods, they come to an end. And in my humble opinion, the golden period in America is coming to an end too. Because we see Zionism, which is a nicer way to cloud anti-Semitism. It's a more socially acceptable way. It's not nice for a person not intelligent. The intelligent person says he hates Jews. No, that's racism. But he hates Zionism. That's a political movement. But Zionism, he doesn't mean about Zionists. He's talking about Jews. He's talking about Jews. And the war against Hamas is just another reason. Here, the people are willing to justify the massacre of innocent women and children and grandmothers and grandfathers and civilians in order to hate Jews. And it's, it's amazing. We hear the, the UN, the UN, which has lost its uh, right to exist a long time ago, talk about that we should give a uh, humanitarian corridor to Israel. Let me ask that, the UN. In Gaza, in captivity right now, there's a three-year-old child. And she doesn't have a mother, she doesn't have a father because Hamas killed them both. What about holding a three-year-old girl, a three-year-old little toddler in captivity? Who knows? What, what's, what's her future going to be like? What's her future going to be like? They feel that she's been neglected, she's been left alone. She's behind, at, b- behind Gaza under, under some tunnel with these beasts. And what, what about humanitarian for her? No, when it comes to humanitarian rights for Jews, no, there's no humanitarian rights for Jews, only for the murderers. No, that doesn't hold. And we're not going to listen to that. We have to understand that we do what is good for us. We do what Hashem tells us in the Torah. Sometimes, like King Solomon tells us, there's a time for war, a time for peace, a time to love, and a time for hate, and a time to hug, and a time to refrain from hugging. Is it just the way what King Solomon tells us? And this is the way we have to act. We have to understand if anybody thinks about political correctness to try and make compromises on Torah, on our belief in Hashem, on our observance of mitzvahs in order to placate the nations of the world or to placate the politically correct and the leftist Jews, I'm sorry, i got to take off the gloves. I'm not running for office. And we, <laughs> But to, to, to argue you're Jewish and you can demonstrate in favor of Hamas on the university, first of all, I don't believe that you're Jewish because I don't believe any Jew can demonstrate in, for, in favor of Hamas. Have you seen what they've done? Maybe before you demonstrate, you should examine and see what you're demonstrating about. You demonstrated that you favor massacring people. Tell me about Hamas. Tell me about Hamas cares about the people. The leaders of Hamas, they're all in Qatar and they're in Lebanon. Ismail Khania is worth $3 billion. And they're all... Uh, Khaled Mashal, three and a half a billion dollars. Hamas brings in a billion dollars of income in the world. You can check this out in any statistics you want. Okay, Canadian research statistics, Canadian strategic studies. Uh, is it, Hamas brings a billion dollars a year. But the, 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 the budget for Gaza is 500 million. What happens to the other 500 million from the billion dollars? It all goes into the pockets, the heads of Hamas. They care about their people. They don't care about their people. They didn't build a single bomb shelter for their people. Now, out of this $500 million budget for Gaza, 40% of it, $200 million, goes to digging tunnels and to defense. and to they, they, It's more important for them to kill Jews than to feed their people. So don't come to us, Mr. UN, with a humanitarian. Go to the leaders of Hamas and let them worry about their people. And it's time that sometimes we have to hit hard and tell the truth like it is, if it's not popular. Once again, Laser Brody, I'm worried about spreading Amuna and spreading truth, and I'm not running for office. You don't have to vote for me. You don't have to like. I don't care about likes. I don't care about that. All I care about is Hashem and care about truth, because Hashem is truth. 
Hashem Emet, Ushmo Emet, Hashem is truth and His name is truth. And we stick to the truth, we stick to our Torah, and we stick to our guns. And you know what we're going to see? We're going to see Mashiach Tzidkenu, that He's going to come, and He's going to come to earth, that He's going to bring the truth, and speedily in our days, and this is the war for Mashiach. Things are not the same as they were on the 6th of October. Today is the 7th of November. It's the Shloshim. It's the 30 days since we lost all our loved ones, and we remember every one of them. If you go in Ashdod, every street corner, every street corner, there's a poster of all the missing and all the, uh, all the abducted, the hostages. Now, we don't forget for a minute. We don't forget for a minute. They have to know one thing. The families are hostages. We pray for every one of the hostages every single day, every single name. We pray for the soldiers of Israel. We've got names for the soldiers of Israel. If you want to really help the war effort, learn Torah for the soldiers of Israel. Learn Torah for the hostages. Pray for the soldiers of Israel. Pray for the hostages. And just say Psalm 130. Say Psalm 130. Hashem, help the soldiers succeed. Hashem, help the hostages be released soon. And to be the glory and honor of your name. And we should all see the full redemption of our people right here in the land of Israel. Speeding our days on Maine. And think twice about your future in diaspora. Beloved brothers and sisters, whether you're in the U.S., Canada, U.K., Australia, New Zealand, Europe, it's time to come home. And maybe it looks scary in Israel, but it's a lot more scary in the University of Pennsylvania or in Cooper Union in New York or in the University of Florida. And this is your home right here in the land of Israel. And we look forward to seeing you together with Mashiach and gathering of all the exiles. Speeding our days. Amen. God bless from Ashdod in the south of Israel.